As I've said before, the animation of Ruby has always been a mixed bag. The action animation for the first three volumes almost always being the major highlight. Volume 4 changed that and made the non-action and character animation the standout. The action animation mainly ranging from bad up to great, but never fully reached the same highs as the previous volumes. The action was okay for what Volume 4 was, and the issues I had were mainly things I took personal issues with. What I consider poor and weak choreography and snappy animation, also how the camera would, in my opinion, be too close to the action, and how the physics of the characters' actions were portrayed. I'm happy to see that these things I took issue with were not much of an issue for Volume 5, except for the physics of these two scenes. So then, how did the non-action and action animation of Volume 5 turn out? As stated before, the non-action animation of Ruby is no longer awkward or janky. This holds true for Volume 5, but some scenes are a little weaker in this regard due to how often the characters are just sitting or standing around talking. The animation for these scenes is not bad, but are just not that interesting to watch. This is especially true in the animation for these types of scenes happening in Mistral because it almost always takes place in the same room. Other than that, the character animation for the non-action scenes is really good. This time I also get to mention how good the mouth animation is during these scenes. Ruby's mouth animation prior to Volume 4 can be pretty distracting from time to time. But I watch a lot of anime dubbed, so I'm used to that animation not exactly lining up with what is being said. But it is always so satisfying for me to see the animation of the mouths sync so well to what is being said. Probably because I am just not that used to seeing it. Surprisingly, it was the animation of Adam having a hissy fit that I really liked for its mouth animation. The action animation this time around is something I believe tended to have a legit problem. That is how slow I found the animation of the action scenes to end up from time to time. It's not slow all the time, just some of the time. There is more to it than just the speed of the action. I think the best way to explain this is to get right into what I think could be done to address this issue. I'm going to reference a few of the 12 principles of animation. If you want a basic understanding of what these principles are and how they are used and can affect animation, check out the video series by Alan Becker tackling these principles on his tutorial YouTube channel. First up is the principle of timing. Pretty straightforward since it deals with how many frames an action takes. The more frames an action takes, the slower the action. The less frames, the faster the action. I'm not saying the action animation needs to be drastically faster in these scenes, but I think 5-15% to faster would be enough. The problem I think this would adequately address is the lack of urgency in the action animation and in the movement of the characters. Again, this isn't true all the time, only some of the time. This principle could also help speed up the dust and projectile attacks. I just think these attacks move way too slow. The other principle of animation I think would help is exaggeration. Exaggeration is taking the point of the animation, or what is being conveyed, and enhancing it in order to make it more pronounced. A quick example of this for action animation is impact frames. You can find out more about those in the Canapa FX videos on One Punch Man. Now, exaggeration doesn't have to be a full-on spectacle in a brief moment. For example, how Ruby is being animated here is great exaggeration. It is highlighting her awe and excitement over Yane's prosthetic arm. The thing I think exaggeration will help with is convey the impacts of the action and the emotion of the characters. Now, look at Oscar knocking Lionheart down the stairs. The force conveyed doesn't seem like it is actually enough to send Lionheart flying and falling down the stairs. Imagine if Oscar used both hands to strike Lionheart, and that the animation, visual effects, and camera better sold the impact and motion of the strike. The other bits I think exaggeration would massively help out are Zahn's attacks against Cinder. This is Jean when he isn't attacking Cinder. This is Jean when he is attacking Cinder. Do you see what's missing? It is the emotion and effort Jean is going through and putting in. It seriously looks like Jean isn't even trying. Cinder should definitely not be doing so because, well, she is fighting Jean. There is a massive skill gap between the two of them, but Jean should at least look like he is putting his all into his attacks and have the emotions of his character being enforced through his actions. I don't get the sense that he is even trying to make her pay for what she did. That's what I think the principle of exaggeration can be used to help here. The combination of both the principles of timing and exaggeration is what I think will help alleviate how slow the action animation would tend to get. 
I think these would help create a better sense of urgency in the action and better convey the emotions and impacts of the strikes done by the characters. I was also going to bring up the principle of follow-through for the stop-and-go animation, but I realized that this most likely won't help resolve the issue. Truly, the animation just needs better, smoother transitions between each primary action. The Kruby teased us before the volume started at RTX saying that there was going to be some Montiness coming. And I think they did pretty well at that with some key moments. Sun vs. Zelia and Raven vs. Cinder being the best in this regard. Other moments were not so well done. For example, when Sun saved Blake. This sequence feels much slower than it ought to by having the editing and writing focus on redundant things. Blake says now, but the edit gives time for the enemies to react and the camera focuses on that. Somehow the girl is surprised that they just got jumped. She pulls out her weapon and things stop for the camera to focus on her weapon as a visual effect runs on it. That, right there, is the biggest issue I have here. The stopping of things just to focus on and highlight the sword. My issue? Simply put, what's the point? All this says is that she has a weapon and it is sharp. This isn't the first time we've seen such an effect used to highlight a character's weapon. It was last used back in Volume 4 when Tyrion attacked Jon, but there, it has much more purpose and meaning. Let's put the same question here. What's the point in doing this? This time things have been slowed down instead of left going at regular speed with an odd camera zoom. It's trying to have us focus on this crucial moment. During this moment, Tyrion's weapon he is about to attack Jon with is being given a visual effect to highlight it. This all comes together to tell us that Tyrion's attack is serious. It causes us to worry for Jean's safety, especially since he is being taken by complete surprise. Lucky for Jean, Ren, who was able to adequately handle himself when fighting Tyrion earlier, kept up and stopped Tyrion's attack. See how much more was put into the use of this visual effect here compared to how it was used in Volume 5? Jumping back to talk about the Montiness found in some of the action scenes animation, I saw some moments that were clearly inspired by what Monty had done previously. The White Knight jumping off the airship reminded me of Dead Fantasy 2. Also, the animation of Sun vs. Ilya takes similar cues from Sun vs. Roman, but the animation is more polished and does enough to differentiate itself from what was previously done. The action sequence I enjoyed the most in this volume comes from Raven vs. Cinder. The scene has issues early on due to Cinder having some odd poses and a not as fluid, somewhat slow animation. My favorite shot for this early bit is Raven getting knocked back along with a flurry of ice chunks. The sequence for this fight I enjoyed the most takes place during their battle among the falling rocks. This moment in particular is what made me love it. Raven disarms the weapon in Cinder's left hand, you know, her weak side, and continues the pressure. This causes Cinder to go completely on the defensive and retreat. The one thing about this part of the sequence I like is that in one part of the frame, we can see the expressions of both Raven and Cinder. This moment told me that Raven is the one who is going to win this fight, because she is composed and confident, while Cinder is aggravated and losing control of the fight. I also like how the camera in this one shot keeps both Cinder and Raven in frame as they jump from rock to rock. The way this all ends is also really decent through the setup for what Raven ends up doing, as well as the tumble animation. I did notice one issue for this sequence. It comes immediately after Raven finishes her pressure against Cinder. A large chunk of her katana just vanishes. I think there was supposed to be an animation of the blue covering her blade shattering, but it didn't make it into the final render before release. There's one final thing I have to talk about before finishing this video. The inconsistencies found in the action scenes. This was a problem for Volume 4 and this problem continues for Volume 5. I'm just going to talk about what I found in the action scenes of Episode 10, mainly the bits when Sun and Gira enter the fray. First one is when Fennec is yelling at Ilya, and then goes to attack Gira. He's on the opposite side of the room from the side that has a hole in the wall. Gira's back is towards the hole in the wall, and Corsac is in front of him. After Fennec pulls his weapon, it cuts to him charging, and now he's on the opposite side of the room. Gira and Corsac have also done a 180 degree rotation, and have even moved past Ilya. The second one comes soon after. Fennec goes to attack Gira with dust while Gira was fighting Corsac. When Gira grabs Fennec's weapon, Corsac can no longer be seen. Two shots later, and Corsac reappears in a position we should have seen him in during the previously mentioned shot. Third is when Sun enters the fray, and sees Blake finally starting to get up. He looks over to his left and the camera cuts to Ilya. The thing is, Ilya is actually to Sun's right. The edit conveys that he is looking at her, just by their positions in the frames of both shots, 
and the direction they are both facing, but this isn't consistent with their positions in the scene. The last one is when Sun goes to attack Ilya. Blake disappears from the background from where we last saw her, and then later reappears back in the place where she previously was... Uh... What? Let me explain. What I first showed is what was originally released to first members. This here is what replaced it on all official channels about a week or so later. This addressed the issue of Blake disappearing, but this change actually makes the moment when Sun attacks Ilya worse. Okay, so now Blake gets up and walks off. First problem, what is she doing? Where is she going? I have no idea why she is walking off while her father is in danger. She could be leaving to go find her mother, but I think she is going back out the way she came in. Second problem, who is Sun supposed to be looking at now? Blake went off to his left, and he turns his head in that direction with an angry look on his face. Is he supposed to be looking at Blake in this way now, or is he still looking at Ilya? Third potential problem, why does Sun go to attack Ilya when Gira tells Sun to help Blake? Blake went off to the left to do God knows what, which is in the opposite direction of Ilya, and Ilya isn't giving chase. This worked properly before because Blake was visibly on the ground with Ilya standing close by. Sun and Gira don't know that the fight between them is over and must have guessed that Blake needs help to fight Ilya. Fourth and final problem, why is Blake back on the ground kneeling? She didn't seem injured from how she got up. This change from what was originally released is truly baffling. This change actually doubled the amount of problems here. The inconsistencies in the animation and presentation for this series are truly getting ridiculous. The only thing I think needs to happen is to have better communication between the writers, storyboarders, editors, individual animators, and directors. Maybe hire more people for QA as well. And have more oversight for what each are producing. This is becoming way too big of an issue, especially since this stuff continues for the last four episodes. To finish this off, I think the action animation is somewhat better overall when compared to Volume 4. Volume 4 had a few well-animated action scenes, this time most of the action scenes had standout moments put in. Not a lot, but at least a good number of moments. The sky battle is pretty good, but slows down at the end. Game fighting the bandits is surprisingly consistent, but I find myself not getting into it all that much. That scene is good, and the slowness of the animation that played the other scenes isn't so much of an issue here. I think my issue might come from some of the unnecessary slowdown in some moments. The early parts of the attack on the Abelladonna Manor are not that good, but it picks up and gets much better when Blake and then Sun fights Ilya. The battle at Haven is a mixed match of really bad and alright. I'll cover the issues here during the last video. Raven vs. Cinder is the standout action scene for me. It is clearly inspired by the Cloud vs. Sephiroth fight from Bad Book Children, but I didn't recognize any sequences that were taken from the film. This is unlike the Sky Battle in Gira fighting Corsac, which clearly take from the film in My Hero Academia and both end up feeling and replicating them. The problem that is holding these scenes back tremendously are the inconsistencies found in the animation and placement of the characters. Those were my thoughts, so now I'm wondering yours. What were your favorite pieces of animation for Volume 5, action and non-action? Did you find the action animation to be considerably slower when compared to the previous volumes, even before? What were some issues you think the animation had, and what could be done to fix them? Hit the comments below, and let me know what you think.